we're just doing uh, C8 murder and block. Uh, Smite and murder and blocks are officially tricky to do. Uh, the problem is the proximity of the vertebral artery. To find the relevant intermural frame, it's relatively straightforward with the CT, we just basically scan up and down. Um, once we've lined up at the right spot, we're going to use a 25 gauge spinal needle with a bead on the tip to allow us to negotiate to get the right down to the exact point. Confirm needle tip localization via the patient symptoms because I've got pain in the distribution of the normal pain down the right arm. Uh, then inject the small and still in the right back aesthetic. Okay, let's have some zoom. In terms of dose, for thickness to ones, uh, we do one millimeter slice thickness, and we take the MA. We're currently running at 20 MA, and we take that down to 10. Let's take that to 10. 120 kb, 10 MA, and one millimeter slice thickness will get us to where we want to go for a survival. What I normally do is take the wrapping off the. Dressing pack and chuck it across the end of the table here functions as a sterile handle, saves you putting out a second tray in a sterile handle. Um, and I chucked a little tongs to come with dressing pack onto that and stop it floating off and people walk past it. It's only a very lightweight piece of plastic. Okay, low fat aesthetic. We do it from in front, that way you've got room to actually get in between the patient and the gantry to get to where you want to go. And unlike the RFA case, which you may have seen on another video, with this case, we are going in plane, so we don't angle in in this situation. So this is a different technique. This is an iterative technique. What we're going to do here is approach the right spot by placing the needle and then adjusting the needle tip. Okay, prep and drape. Right, now this is an iterative technique, as opposed to uh, fluoro CT guiding in by direct steer under real time, which is what we saw with the radio frequency ablation video. With this case, this is going to be iterative. What that means is that we're going to place the needle, tap the pedal, have a look, at, check the needle position, reposition the needle, tap, check position, and so on, so that we move down to the right spot. In order to facilitate that, what we're going to do is put a bit of a bend on the end of the needle. This is a Chiba needle, it's a 25 gauge Chiba spinal. So it's got a little chamfer cut onto the end of the needle anyway, but we're going to exaggerate the steer afforded by that chamfer. So we take a 19 gauge drawing up needle, so that's a straight tip drawing up needle. Don't use the one with the sharp end, use the one with the straight tip, because uh, you can't apply the right sort of force if it's the sharp needle. And then of course, we never resheath needles in New South Wales Health because that's illegal. Uh, we place the 25 gauge needle inside the 19 gauge. Just move it in about about four or five millimeters is all you want, just inside the 19. Now, watching carefully, I'm pulling with my left hand. I'm supporting the junction of the two needles here with the ring finger of right hand because I'm a right-handed operator. I'm holding the hub of the drawing up needle with thumb and forefinger of right hand, so it's a a real three ring circus this thing and I've very carefully got the bevel of the cheaper needle facing uppermost and I know where the bevel is because there's a notch on the hub of the needle. And what I'm doing here is just applying a little bit of pressure just to put a little bit of a radius bend. I'm then just easing that back out. I had that in about six millimeters into the drawing up needle so that the end result is that we've got a smooth curve on the end of that needle and that exaggerates the, the normal steer we get from the chamfer on a Chiba needle and will allow us to get this to go where it's going to go. Now, in practice, the 25 gauge needles are more accommodating than the 22s, are in turn more accommodating the 18. So in fact, I might actually put a little bit extra bend on that so you can pull it out, have a little look-see, have a bit of a think about that, and then just sort of finesse it. It's a bit like radiusing a pipe if you're doing plumbing work, it's much the same principle. If you make it a sharp bend, then the stilet won't run. That's no good to us, we need the stilet to be able to run because we're going to put this down in position and then take the stilet out to inject the steroid and local. So sharp bends are out, it's got to be a nice smooth radius curve. Okay, we're using cellarstone chronodose as opposed to canacord. Cellarstone is uh, a finer suspension and uh, it will go down to 25 gauge. Canacord A40, which is the alternative, preparation will not go down a 25 gauge needle, so we're using cellarstone. In thin candidates where the, we're chasing cervical facet joints close to the skin, you can actually use the local anaesthetic needle itself to 
get into the facet joint. In this situation, we're chasing a nerve and we're going down C8, so it's the most difficult of the cervical nerve roots to approach. So we have to use the spinal needle and throw a CT. sensation in the distribution of the C8 root uh, tells us we're in the right spot anatomically. Okay, we're just going to show now the video component of what you've just seen live in the room. We're doing the zoom at this stage. As I mentioned before, the way to get spatial resolution in fluoro CT is through zoom. Unlike normal CT where you use kernel manipulation, with fluoro CT you zoom up the image. These are one millimeter slices. You can see it's quite noisy. Um, but we've got high inherent contrast of bone against soft tissue, so we don't care too much about the noise. It's a bit noisier down here at the shoulders. I'm just hunting around now with the motor, motoring the table in and out to demonstrate the first rib, which you can see the first and second ribs just coming into view there. So that gives me my anatomical orientation and shows me that I'm coming up for the C7 slash T1 intervertebral foramen, and that gives me C8 nerve root. This is a single shot, just tap the pedal once to show the local anaesthetic needle lying on the skin that confirms the orientation and here's the local anaesthetic needle now appearing put some local anaesthetic next to the bone because we're going to be coming in close to the bone these are just single shots so this isn't real time these are just iterative technique single shots just tap the pedal once and see where the tip of the needle is and inject some local so we obviously don't watch real time as we're injecting the local this is the 25 gauge spinal needle now you can see the bend that we put on the needle earlier and these again a series of iterative shots as I manipulate the needle, placing the needle in, rotating the needle, using that curve to steer the needle tip to where I want to be. We're coming in deliberately quite posterior in the intervertebral foramen to avoid the vascular structures. Although the vertebral artery we know is well anterior from this point and we know should theoretically be above this level, uh, we nonetheless want to stay well and truly out of its way so we're coming in 
quite posterior. These shots here are just motoring the table in and out so that we can watch up and down the needle and get a feel for the trajectory of the needle. Don't normally tilt the gantry in this situation, we just use a straight gantry. You can see the needle tip there has wound up just at the lowermost edge of the intervertebral foramen. Um, going to need to go a little bit higher than that for our final positioning. So as you can see, a series of uh, snapshots here showing the needle tip, using the bend on the end of the needle to direct the tip, and it's a series of snapshots get us our needle tip getting closer and closer to the final position. Here we are just a little bit too anterior to where we want to be and on the last shot I've finessed that slightly and we've got the needle tip. There we are at the posterior aspect of that intervertebral foramen. That's the final position and that's the position that we injected from. So there we are, that's using Fluoro CT to place a 25 gauge needle with a little bend on the end just to get the tip at exactly the right spot to deliver steroid and local. So this has been an exercise in using fluoro CT using an iterative technique. If you look at the video we have on radio frequency ablation, that's using a real time technique. In this situation today, we're using single static shots. So a lot of these images are just taken with a single tap of the pedal, which gives us about 1.3 seconds of total fluoroscopic time at 10 MAS. So that's 5 MA per half second image. So it's a very low dose technique and of course this is iterative so the operator's hand is not in the beam during the actual acquisition. So you just tap the pedal, check your position of your needle and make a decision. Now you could do this with a non-fluoro system. You're not really using the real time aspect but it is so much quicker to be able to tap the pedal, check your position, manipulate the needle and then tap the pedal again. The fluoro CT really is the best way to achieve this sort of result. Thanks very much and we'll see you in subsequent videos.